Hello and welcome to New York. And you can see out of the window and you may be able to hear many hooting horns right on cue. Um, so bear with me as I bring you day one of New York Fashion Week. Um, we're kind of day one and day two. Um, I'm Ed Tetty Malik and I'm in New York, as you can see. And we're going to be talking about the coach show, which on on Thursday night, and then the Helmut Lang show, which was today, Friday. Um, these were both very personal shows from each of the designers. So we have Stuart Beavers at Coach, who is celebrating 10 years as Grace Director of the brand. And then we have Peter Doe, who was celebrating his very first show ever um, as creative director for Helmut Lang. Um, and the kind of thoughts that I'm, the things that I'm kind of thinking after these two shows and that I want to kind of explore in this review is that idea of resurgence, um, that idea of kind of Peter has been brought to Helmut Lang to resurge this cult label. Stuart Vivers kind of is responsible for the resurgence of Coach over the last 10 years. He introduced Ready to Wear at the brand. He's made Coach go from this American kind of handbag brand to a global luxury label that is incredibly successful. Um, and it's really interesting to kind of start New York Fashion Week, which, you know, the schedule feels really full this season. It feels exciting. It feels like New York fashion in general is definitely having a moment of resurgence all of its own. And there's always, there's been this conversation, especially over the last kind of 10 years in luxury of this idea of how to kind of London and New York in particular compete with the high fashion luxury of Europe. This idea that kind of Paris especially is really where designers aim to be eventually. We've had a lot of kind of musical chairs and moving of brands um, to Milan and Paris. And it feels like Milan and Paris definitely have those more solidified identities um, and New York over the past few years has felt like it's you know hasn't found its feet much but actually over the past kind of year especially which I'm going to really discuss why especially with coach but especially over the last year it really feels that a lot of New York brands are actually digging their heels in a bit and saying actually you know we're not going to aspire to looking beyond kind of Europe and stuff, we're actually going to focus on New York and being proud of being, showing in New York and being in New York. And it very much felt like these two shows were about that. And um, so let's begin with Coach. Thursday evening, marking 10 years um, of Stuart, the brand. Um, I kind of said that, you know, I want to talk about Coach in terms of this idea of digging heels in in New York, um, because Tapestry, which is the luxury group that owns Coach, um, recently acquired Capri Holdings, who own brands like Michael Kors and Versace. Um, so bringing that all into the fold and creating this kind of new big luxury group in America. Um, and that kind of that kind of idea of establishing this group, which, you know, it's, I think it's a feat to really say that you want to rival kind of the LVMH, the caring of the world, but actually it feels like they're establishing this kind of stronghold that's American based, it's American fashion focused. Um, and Coach as part of that really felt like, especially with this show, that it was about a celebration of America. Over the past 10 years, you know, Stuart's always taken this approach at Coach of looking at different elements in America. He's actually from England, from Northern England, and um, he moved to New York to do the job at Coach. So he always is kind of looking at these ideas of America from an outsider perspective, but it never feels kind of cliche. It's got this element of aspiration and almost fantasy that you want from, from a big luxury fashion brand. You want that kind of element of fantasy. Aspiration is what sells after all, but it never feels cliche. Um, it's always got this, He's, he's really good at kind of understanding American culture from an outsider point of view, but then relaying that in a way that's, that is relatable to popular culture. He's so good at understanding popular culture. You know, over these 10 years that he's made Coach this global brand and made it about not just the handbags, but the full look. You know, first five years, it grew over $4 billion in revenue. But it's, you know, it's this, it's this tying into popular culture that Stuart gets so well, whether that's kind of campaigns with JLo, collaborations with Selena Gomez, um, Lil Nas X, who was at the show, is their recently announced global brand ambassador. You know, they've got huge success on TikTok, whether that's the campaigns that they do, they've had TikTokers in their kind of more official advertising campaigns, but also they generate so much um, organic 
social media content, especially through TikTok, with products like the pillow bag that did so well after lockdown. And, you know, all of that kind of organic content has really made Coach perforate into the modern consumer's kind of brand periphery and understanding. It's in the public imagination in America of of kind of the one of the ultimate luxury fashion brands. And it's not just America, it's it has that it's had that effect globally and that's so hard to do with a brand in such a saturated market and I mean market both in terms of fashion and brands but also social media you know it's so hard to break through with kind of content as a brand and this show was all about kind of looking back but looking forwards especially looking back to kind of the 1990s to the grunge era you know in the press notes he says you know I wanted a very personal collection that would capture the archetypes of New York fashion when he first came to New York in the 90s um, and remembering it in his own way. So you can definitely feel those kind of archetypes in terms of kind of the leather, the lace cami dresses, the oversized kind of brush suede pea coat, the metal hardware kind of Western boot. But actually he's not just looking forwards, he's tapping in again to popular culture, especially that TikTok kind of grunge resurgence. Those boots which are in this collection are kind of the boot of the season right now. He knows what he's kind of doing by looking looking backwards and celebrating his own memories of New York. He's also doing that at a very kind of, yes, he's looking back, but he also knows exactly what he's tapping into because it's incredibly current. And also what's really clever is all of these looks can almost be recreated. You don't need to buy it to recreate it. And that, again, is really clever because you're gonna see that influence perforate, you know, like the lace cami dress, the leather coat, the boots, it's all kind of coming back and Coach is kind of capturing that and keeping itself present in the conversation, which is such a great kind of apt reflection of everything that Stuart does, has done over the past 10 years, is really lead that conversation, but also tap directly into it. Next, let's talk about Helmut Lang and Peter Doe. Um, this was probably the most anticipated show of the season. And um, it's really difficult when you're dealing with kind of an archive ready brand, if you will. Um, Helmut Lang, the brand is kind of absolutely revered, you know, go on vintage resale sites. It's one of those cult labels people kind of search for. You know, it's never since Helmut Lang himself left the brand in 2004, 2005, the brand has never really managed to recapture that magic. They've had several different iterations of creative directors, um, kind of different editorial directions, but it's never really got it right, you know. I think what we've learned over the past kind of, what is it, 15 years or so of different kind of iterations of Helmut Lang is that reissuing kind of archive, key archive pieces in new collections feels inauthentic, it doesn't work. Um, and I think what we've also learned is how difficult it is to kind of take on such a heavy archive brand because how much of yourself do you put into that as a designer? How much do you kind of rework and reissue the kind of archives? It's a very, very different, difficult balance to find. So I think people weren't, weren't surprised by the announcement of Peter Doe because, firstly, because he's actually kind of from the school of Helmut Lang. You know, he's grown up with Helmut Lang and also Peter has this, in his own namesake label, there's definitely this appreciation for for some of these elements that we you can find in kind of OG Hell at Lang, you know, an appreciation for cut, an appreciation for necessi necessity, but necessity of clothing that has those little layers of interest that make the garments special and one of a kind. A great example to think about would be the slashed tank tops and the iterations of the tank top that Helmet did over the years. You know, he'd always take these kind of key pieces and he'd revisit them again and again and again and rework and rework and rework them. It's not about completely creating these absolutely new things each season. It's about reworking and really meditating and caring about the clothes and caring about how that, how that is on the body. And Peter definitely shares that sensibility. So it felt like a good fit. Um, Peter's a Vietnamese American designer. And I think that's pertinent to say because this show was very much, you know, Peter was talking about this idea of the American dream of feeling safe, of personal expression. And what Peter really cleverly did um, this season for his kind of debut was he took a kind of physical and 
metaphorical motif as his anchor. The idea of, you know, you can think of the yellow taxi, which was, you know, the New York yellow taxi, which was used to kind of on the show invitation to promote this show. But actually the idea of the car for Peter is about this kind of vehicle of safety, this vehicle of exploration that we kind of go traveling around in the car. We discover new things. The car is a safe space. The car is kind of a place to go and sit, you know, when you're driving on your own and you're there safe with yourself and you're thinking through your thoughts. But also the car is this kind of symbol of the American dream. One of the key silhouettes was these kind of tailored jacket suits and then that would have the seat belt going across it and then the strips down the legs as well. It was about kind of focusing on those, having that motif, but then focusing on wardrobe staples. Again, that idea of what's essential, what do you need? Um, a really beautiful silhouette was these really low slung denim jeans and this dark indigo wash, then tucked into that with this kind of camel colored shirting. And that was done on both men and women. This really kind of languid, beautiful, effortless, but high luxury silhouette. And um, there was screen printed denim in this collection, but the runway had all these words printed on these kind of sentences, which were from the press release, which we'll put on screen in a second for you, which is a kind of statement from Peter Doe. But that was referencing the Jenny Holzer collaborations um, with Helmut Lang. So it's kind of this black typography on a white backdrop. And then, as I say, that was mirrored onto the tank tops. Um, kind of a nod to those old helmet tank tops we did and one one look have a kind of um, again camel coloured slits out kind of top referencing those ideas of those kind of worked basics we had leather backward zipped bomber jackets um, it felt like this kind of balance of referencing to the archive but not heavy not too heavy at all it was kind of those were just kind of peppered through Peter's kind of sensibilities. So those tail that tailoring that we opened with, the screen printed denim, the shirts tucked into jeans, um, this kind of color blocking, so bright pinks and yellows on white trousers. This was really about Peter presenting his own uniform, but through the language of Helmut Lang with odes to Helmut Lang. Um, I definitely think that this was well balanced, but actually the way that it was presented made it actually quite jarring and hard to understand as a collection. So all of the models kind of would walk down the runway and then they dart off in different directions. Um, and that was, I think, meant to kind of reference the idea of kind of traffic zigzagging, the busyness of kind of a city space, or possibly, you know, the different zigzagging of kind of directions in life, if you want to take it in that metaphorical route. Um, but actually, I think it could have done with a more simple first presentation and then have kept the final walk, which was when we got more models walking at once and zigzagging and they were all kind of mishmashing across the runway and that really felt like the buzz of kind of New York and you could see that I think because of the the pace of how the models walked for the final look for, for the final walk they were all kind of congregated more together so you got to see this as a collective whole and I think you need that that mishmash collective whole worked at the end but actually when you're just seeing kind of I don't know I just felt felt that the way it was presented was kind of jarring and I actually thought that if it had just been presented slightly, slightly with a more formulaic kind of runway, I would have found it easier to contemplate these kind of these kind of looks and this kind of presentation. It's never going to be perfect when someone does a debut, especially when you're dealing with a cult label like this. But Peter did something which felt very personal, you know, on our seats, we had um, had these silk scarves, which reference this idea of a self-portrait, the idea of self-portraiture, but also kind of in self-reflection, Peter talking about his own time, kind of, you know, go and read the press release because it's quite moving. It's kind of this letter of his own journey to becoming a designer and, you know, beating all the odds. Um, and I think to, I think today to put yourself so kind of, to kind of be so vulnerable with yourself, especially in fashion, is really hard and actually you know I think what is maybe closest to the Helmut Lang kind of core is Peter took quite an artistic approach to this collection and quite a mediated and self-reflective and yeah artistic approach to this collection which actually is is very in the style of Helmut Lang but I think you know as critics we need to not 
compare and contrast too much to the old Helmut Lang because I don't think that's really what anyone wants this wants Helmut Lang to be they don't want it to be a reiteration of the past they want it to be something new that has the spirit of what Helmut Lang originally represented and I think from the ingredients of today Peter's definitely going in the right direction um, but congratulations to both Coach and Helmut Lang two brilliant shows to kick off New York Fashion Week and I will be back with many more reviews coming your way thank you bye